Hey everyone, this week at Apollo, I sit down with Kevin, repair center manager in Montreal. We chat about uh, his favorite scooter. We chat about what it's like doing repairs at Apollo. We chat about the bunch of other things. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Maybe you try it. Maybe you try it. All right, hey Kevin, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing well, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad, thanks. Yeah. Um, so what's up? How's, how's everything going at a, how has everything been going at Apollo this week? Uh, Apollo this week for us uh, in the Montreal Repair Center has been going pretty well, actually. Uh, we had a hectic summer, as did, you know, a lot of Apollo, uh, just because that's their peak season and that's the way things are. Uh, but this week, uh, and kind of starting last week is where we really start to feel under control again, mm -hmm. where we're kind of like back where we should be. Um, you know, we're, ha we're at like a, uh, what I would call an acceptable or reasonable uh, wait time for repairs of okay. like two to three days instead yeah. of being like a week and a half. Right. Right. A week and a half is too long. So we're kind of back where we should be. I'm pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have some some stuff to work on for the winter, which is always good because cool. that's almost a perpetual fear of mine of like, we're going to fix all the scooters and twiddle our thumbs right. for December. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the there's case enough this year. Work, as you can see. Yeah, yeah, there's enough things tons, to do. And tons of screws Always. back there. Yeah. Um, okay, so you just talked a little bit about, you know, um, wait times and stuff. Maybe we'll talk a bit about before this week at Apollo. Okay, and we'll get yeah. to this week at Apollo. So standard wait time for someone who brings in a scooter to the shop has historically kind of been how often? Uh, the, like average, I'd say two to three days. Okay. Uh, that number goes up a little bit if it's like, you know, middle of July or early August where that's right. where we see the most volume for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then that is also sort of contingent on parts being in stock. Right. Right. That's, that's if we have parts in stock, usually repairs are no problem. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of outlier cases where we really need to like take the whole thing apart and swap a whole bunch of parts and yeah. kind of do trial and error to figure out what's going on with it. Yeah. But most of the time we, you know, we know how the scooters work. We know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of, it's pretty much first come first served here, except for yeah. like more extreme cases. Right. So it's just a matter of catching up and then waiting for your turn in the line. Yeah. And then we fix your scooter, send you an email and hopefully you come go. and pick it up. Yeah. And you never come back again. Uh, that's, that's the plan. Every time I, every time I send some away, I get to say, yeah, I, hope, uh, I hope I like, it's nice to see you, but I hope I don't see you again. Yeah, right. And it's, it's a dad joke. Yeah, it is. And I love my dad jokes. So <laughs> I, I love it. Um, okay. So yeah, that's how it usually goes. What are some things that people can do to keep their scooter, like easy things that someone can do to keep their scooter in good shape. And so that they never have to come here again. They never, you never have to see them in the first place. So first one, uh, the most common repair we see here is flat tires. Yes. It's obviously less with the, the new cities and the scooters that have the self-healing tires. We get a lot, like much, much less flats on those models. Mm -hmm. But we still have lots of old explorers on the road, ghosts, uh, city 21s. Mm -hmm. um, and so flat tires are our biggest, you know, ticket item. Right. Um, so keeping your tires inflated, uh, most scooters are 50 PSI. Uh, the Airs are 36, and the new uh, City Pro, I think, is 45. Mm -hmm. I might need to double check on yeah. that one. Um, but keeping your tires inflated will go a long, long way to making sure you don't get flats. It also extends your battery life because you just have the optimal sort of force. Like, you know, for every force, there's an equal and opposite yeah. reaction, right? So as the tire is digging into the ground, the ground's pushing back on the scooter. That's right. what lets it go. So at the correct PSI, that's when you have the optimal amount to kind of get you going first, further. Um, so your battery life will be better. Your top speed will be better. Mm -hmm. um, number two thing would be clean your scooter. Yes. You don't need to be super intense about it, but if you get caught in the rain, wipe it down after. If you, you know, just kind of went a bit off-roading and it's dusty, just take a dry cloth, yeah. not not a soaking wet cloth, but take no something, hose. Wipe, no, no hose. hose. Don't take a hose to it. I have yeah. seen that happen. Yeah. And then people go, oh, I guess that wasn't a good idea, right. was it? It's like, the scooters are water resistant. They are not yeah. waterproof. Have you seen the, there was a video someone posted on Reddit of just literally hosing down their pro. Oh no. Um, but it, it, see that. It, it, well, that's, yeah, that's good. And that, that one, the way the pros and the, the city 22s and pretty much all of our newer models are designed are much, much more water resistant. Yeah. And even the fact that you access the battery through the bottom of them and not from the top, like you would on the older models, makes them a lot more resistant. Right. Still don't advise taking a yes. hose to it. Dry ever. cloth. Yeah, dry damp, cloth. Damp cloth. You can have a little dampness. Yeah. You don't want it soaking wet. No soap. 
Okay. You know, but cleaning it, especially if you, you know, want to invest a little bit of money and buy a can of like pressurized air mm -hmm. from Canadian Tire or something like that. Right. Clean out your suspension, get rid of all the dirt and dust that builds up in there. That'll keep it running more silence okay. um, and just kind of give you a better, you know, a more comfortable ride yeah. uh, over time yeah. for sure. And then tighten your screws. Make tighten sure your screws. Tight. Yeah, absolutely. Especially yeah. the older your scooter gets the more frequently you should be doing exactly. it. You know, a brand new scooter, you know, you do an initial check when you first get it. You know, we do a really good job with QC, but nothing is perfect. Yeah. Um, but, you know, after you ride it two weeks, just make sure you tighten it, yeah. then maybe you should be good for another month. Yeah. And just check. Yeah. Um, as you get your scooter gets two years old, that's when it becomes more critical. The start of a riding season, after maybe every 100 or so kilometers, just verify that things are tight. Yeah. Uh, you can always use Loctite if you find something is keeps getting loose mm -hmm. uh, more frequently than it should. Um, yeah, bring it in. Yeah, we got, we got, and, and we of got course, we have maintenance pack packages. Yeah. Uh, we, if you aren't comfortable fixing anything on yourself, uh, by all means, please, please bring it in. We'd much rather you be safe and comfortable right. on the road having us worked on the scooter than you doing something and being unsure about mm -hmm. the whole process. And we can even show you some of the things we've done to kind of help you maybe save some cash for the next time. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's those preventative maintenance guys we have on the help desk that are mm -hmm. going to show that show everyone basically like every certain number of kilometers what checks you should be doing. Um, but I think where there is still a little bit of a knowledge gap is, and maybe you could be help you help some people who are watching this video is what are some like tools that people should have at home. Um, when it comes to like, if you want to make sure that you're riding and operating your scooter as safe as possible, what are some things that you should have in your sort of like toolkit? So, uh, the first thing I would recommend is a good quality set of metric Allen keys. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the smallest size we use is probably two millimeters, yeah. uh, and up to 10 millimeters that your average, you know, pack that you'd get at any hardware store usually comes with 1.5 millimeters all the way up to 10. Mm -hmm. um, and all the sizes are common. Uh, the only scooter we have that might need something slightly bigger than that is the new V3 Phantoms, yeah, where the, it's, it's 12, 12 millimeters for the main direction bolt there. Um, but that will get you covered for just about every screw. Uh, the other thing that is always really handy is just an adjustable wrench. Mm -hmm. You don't need a whole set. An adjustable wrench will get you 99% of the way there or, you know, not even 90%, but like it'll cover 99% of cases. Yeah. Um, and that is needed for, you know, if you have a flat tire, you need to remove the wheel, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and then I would also recommend a good quality air pump, something that will tell you the pressure that you're pumping up. Because yeah. you can get basic, you know, basketball pumps or, or bike pumps, and you kind of just playing a guessing game, okay, how much air pressure is in here? Mm -hmm. And if you have too much air pressure, you're at risk of kind of your tire exploding. And yeah. if you have too little air pressure, you're at risk of having flats very easily yeah. and also not getting your optimal range and speed. Exactly. Um, so those would be my top three off my head for sure. Yeah, uh, a red Loctite is a good one. Red, red, red Loctite's well. good. Uh, Let's be like, a bit heavy more deep. Yeah, more. blue Loctite is, is kind of almost more preferred because okay. anything you should, like red Loctite we use for something that should never, ever, ever come loose, right? There are some things obviously that shouldn't come loose, but you need to be able to come loose in order to access them. Yeah. So the wheel nuts on a scooter, if you're, you know, want some extra security, blue Loctite's good, red Loctite's a bit overkill, because when you get a flat tire, or when you need maintenance, you need a brake disc changed, uh, it becomes a real pain to, yeah. to remove that wheel, right? Yeah. Um, I, on my personal scooter, I don't have Loctite anywhere that there isn't Loctite from the factory. Um, I do, you know, kind of like what we're talking about. I do some regular maintenance mm -hmm. on it every, every six weeks, maybe. Right. Um, I am a bit more experienced with the scooters, obviously. Nice. So I, when I ride it, I can kind of be like, Hey, I can feel something's up here yeah. and I can, you know, at the end of my work day, I'm fortunate enough to work here so I can just throw it on, on the bench and, right. and inspect it. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the perks of the job. What, what are you riding right now? Uh, right now, so I am still uh, an Apollo Ghost fan. Okay. Um, the, the Ghost is it's a cult. The, cult the Ghost is a cult favorite. Yeah. So I, my reasons for liking the Ghost are I'm kind of like an old school. I, we say I'm the old man mm -hmm. of, of the, the repair center. I thought it was the dad jokes. I, I, the dad jokes. Yeah. I am the oldest one who works here, but I'm like 32. I'm not right. really an old man. <laughs> um, that being said, I, you know, our app is wonderful. It has lots of really, really cool features, but like, 
I don't need any of them. Right. Uh, so I like to just go. I like the ghosts. It's easier to repair, right? Me knowing how to repair them and, and maintain them. The ghosts yeah. uh, are, you know, the City 23 looks beautiful. It actually is fantastic. Uh, yeah, my friends just bought one and it's so, it's good. so, so good. Yeah. Um, but if there somehow is a problem with all the hidden wires and kind of the sleek look, it means it's a bit more time consuming to do those repairs. Right. Um, and me, I am always a, a function over form mm -hmm. type person. That's so I like having the, the wires a bit more visible and a bit more accessible. Yeah. Um, the ghost isn't perfect. I wish the fenders were better. Yeah. Um, I have phantom tires on my ghost as well. Cause I think the phantom tires are, are cooler and okay. they're, they're a bit more rounded, more comfortable when you're cornering. Sure. Um, but yeah, the ghost, the deck is just really nice and it's a, little i think it's only like half inch lower yeah but somehow it feels a lot lower to the ground than the phantom which is kind of the most comparable scooter i would okay. say um and being lower to the ground kind of lowers your center of gravity and i feel a bit more secure when i'm doing those corners right. um and it's just the first scooter i rode when i when i started working here and i kind of like it's fell in love at first ride sentimental yeah yeah there. a little bit okay cool um so this has been more of a meet and greet than this week at Apollo. Oh, sorry, <laughs> no, that's okay. Sorry. Um, okay, this week at Apollo. So yeah. this week we've had a couple things happen. Um, we've been doing an inventory count. Yeah. Um, and how's that been going? Man, it looks so good in the parts warehouse. I have yeah. never, ever seen it look that good. Yeah. I was just in there grabbing some, yeah, some inner tubes and it was just like, wow. I helped out for a bit. I wasn't able to help out as much as some other guys. Right. Um, but man, it looks amazing in there. I am so, so looking forward to how much that will help us mm -hmm. going forward in terms of like, okay, like how easy is it to find things? How easy is it to, to just have an accurate stock count? That sounds like a, you know, a thing that should be automatic, but when you have thousands and thousands of different parts that are this big, yeah. it becomes quite challenging, yeah. uh, especially when you're not receiving standardized boxes from right. your suppliers. Right. Yeah. Um, so it should be we have a great great base to, mm -hmm. to build from now yeah and we've been getting assemblies assemblies yeah the assemblies right? and that's sort of the next level right that we've taken uh so instead of receiving a box with six different types of parts in it it's like no now we have the real box with the barcodes with the the labels on it it's like uh, boxes it's created like night and day yeah specifically it's, for that piece it's so, so and nice some random box mm -hmm, being, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of stuff and there. even the cardboard seems higher yeah. quality yeah. Than yeah. We to really get stuff in. yeah yeah i think i think yeah. i think this year we decided that we were done with all that extra stuff we yeah. wanted to just like get it right from the beginning and it's been a painful process but i think we're going to start to see some of the benefits of that's that that's worth it yeah for sure um so so and then you've got you know uh kind of close to the end of the season. So compiling all the scooters that have been sort of like pulled, picked apart into little mm -hmm. pieces and now you're kind of getting ready to, you know, scrap or... So we're, we're getting ready, like a, our big push. Uh, I get lots of people in here in the Montreal Repair Center wanting to buy used scooters. Right. Uh, and we, we sell used scooters, right? We sell our ref refurbs. Yeah. Um, but the problem is they're often sold out. Mm -hmm. And that's the case through the summer is because we're very busy in the summer and our priority is obviously repairs, right? Yeah, that's customers. customers We've already bought a scooter from us. You're our priority, yeah. um, and we want to get you on the road faster. So when we get all these returns, uh, you know, a few a week, uh, they kind of just sit on the shelf until September, October, when we finally have time to open them, do the proper inspection, mm -hmm. do the repairs that might be necessary on them, and then they get listed uh, just in time for winter, yeah. which which sucks. Uh, right. I know, but people get uh, some good deals. You, there are some. That's the best deal you can find, and you know we. Uh, it's not even a joke. It's like another layer of inspection that the yeah. scooters take. A surprisingly large number of people return scooters without ever opening the box. Mm -hmm. um, and so they are literally like brand new, right. never ridden, and you can save a hundred bucks, yeah. which is Minimum. which is a lot, right? And, and everyone gets the full warranty on yeah. the open box. You still get your full uh, warranty. Um, and, um, and yeah, I guess like a, a important note, like every return that comes in, we open the box. We check oh, it, yeah. make sure we, that it's, we inspect we everything. We, we have a whole list of, mm -hmm. of, you know, points to check wheel, like screws, tightness, air pressure, electrical inspections. Uh, we go through the whole gamut of yeah. like making sure that scooter is like new or better. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. Every, and then we sell it and then we sell it for really uh, cheap. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it kind of doesn't even make sense, but yeah. that's the, it makes sense because if someone like once, I mean, I, I could be a little bit wrong, but once a scooter has been delivered to a customer, 
it's considered used, used. right? Even yeah. if they've never opened the box, we don't right. say, okay, they didn't open it, we're gonna sell it as brand yeah. new. Like we, yeah, don't, yeah, no, we, don't, do we don't play around with that, that's mm -hmm. kind of a risky game to play. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're always doing inspections right. and that's like the bulk of our work through our slower seasons. Yeah. Cool. So you've got a bunch of OBs to work through. Absolutely. Uh, open boxes. You've got some units to get compiled. We've got like piles of scooters, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Over around uh, yeah, yeah, around. yeah. We have piles of scooters yeah. cause, uh, you know, as we alluded to earlier, spare parts is sometimes a challenge for us. So we often end up doing is say, okay, we just got a return scooter that's in a little bit of rough shape because yeah. the guy crashed and didn't want to ride it anymore, so they returned it. Mm -hmm. And so instead of spending three hours to maybe repair that scooter, that scooter can then become like a donor scooter where yeah. we say, oh, we need this little suspension. We need, you know, a, uh, from a throttle here. from here that, you know, is on its way, but it's going to be two weeks. Yeah. So we can take it from this, right. not charge the customer. And obviously we will ask them like, hey, are you okay with the used part? Yeah. We won't charge you. Uh, so you'll end up saving you know, 20 to 50 to a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you're riding faster, right? Yeah. You're back on the road yeah. sooner, uh, which is better. Yeah. So yeah. Um, anything else you want to add on, on what you've, uh, what you've got kind of top of mind at the moment, things that you are maybe excited about. We'll wrap up with, uh, uh one final so thing that you're looking forward from to. Apollo. I'm most excited for where, you know, we just launched the pro, yeah. but the scooter that comes next after the pro I'm pretty excited for it. as someone who lives on the second floor of an apartment building. Uh, it's pro, a bit smaller, the, sorry, not the, the pro, light, the, the light, light I'm not sure. Go. Uh, we're going to have this problem. Na name, so name times. coming. Yeah. Uh, that scooter looks awesome from the okay. prototypes I've seen. Yeah. I'm really, really excited to, yeah. to get my hands on that. Um, do you have a preference for the name? I kind of like Rover. Okay. I kind of like Casper, but we're moving away from the Phantom I, oh, ghost, like thing, ghost thing. Right? thing. Okay. Yeah. There was like the Phantom, the, the ghost. Yeah. I was like Casper, you could call something Spectre or okay. something. Yeah, Spectre's you know? up there on the list. Uh, so I, I, I like that, that lineup okay. uh, of names. I like names to be, be named after something, you know, something cool and not just the, the iPhone 14. Right. You know, that's, okay. yeah. that's lame in my books. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I'm, an, I'm an Android guy, so. Yeah. Well, <laughs> strike me as one. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Thanks, everyone.